Okay, so this is in response to Eric's question about land use in Nairobi. We're just going to go on a transect through Nairobi, and we're going to think about the Burgess model while we're doing it. So now we're outside of Nairobi on the outskirts. If we have a look in here, we can see that this settlement is made up of houses that are quite separate from each other. They're in fields, so we're in the rural area. This is a probably dispersed settlement pattern. We're outside of the city, moving in. Now, if we were in a high-income country, we'd expect this to show us uh, high-value housing, big houses on the outskirts of town, detached houses. That's not what we have here. We've got this rubbish-filled river that's dirty. There are animals feeding in it. These houses are built out of corrugated iron. These are poor materials. Some of these buildings here look like uh, what's known as wattle and daub, where you've got sticks that have been interlaced into each other and then covered with mud uh, is a way of making a wall. This is known as a shanty town, or a favela in South America, but a shanty town here. Also a squatter settlement. We say it's a squatter settlement because this land does not belong to the people who live there. Okay, moving further in. Now, if we were in, again, a HIC and looking at the Burgess model, this would be middle-class housing. That's kind of what we've got here uh, for Nairobi. While these houses may not be, while these houses may not be particularly expensive looking, they're definitely professionally built apartments put together by uh, people who are builders by trade. This is a basketball court, some sort of recreational space. We can see this barbed wire about the place, graffiti on the walls, kind of suggests that security isn't great here, but still, we're in a professionally built housing development. And here, moving further in. Now, this is where we'd expect to find the lowest quality housing if we were in a high-income country, because we're now in the inner city area. But instead, we have modern apartments, and you could pretty much put this modern apartment building anywhere in the world. This is the some of the best accommodation that we will find in Nairobi. It, the um, architects obviously paid some attention to try and make it look attractive. It's walled making it more secure. This is a gated settlement. This may well be the little guard's hut here. And so these people, you'd expect them to have air conditioning and a pretty high quality of life, as I say, something that you might see in any high-income country. Now we're into the CBD, and the CBD seems to behave like you'd expect the CBD to behave anywhere in the world. The CBD has uh, expensive hotels, it's got a high-rise skyline with commercial buildings, with lots of cars about the place, with tall buildings that may well be apartment buildings. You can also see that there's some effort for, of landscaping here to make it an attractive environment. They also have the traffic problems that you expect to have in a CBD. Unsurprising here because as Nairobi becomes wealthier and people in Nairobi become wealthy. One of the things they buy relatively early on is a car. So you see lots of cars and the city struggles to cope with them. Moving back out of the city, we're now into this area of lower quality housing, possibly some building development happening behind. This is a small industry area. This is what's called a cottage industry, I suppose. It's not a formal industry, but a trash dump there. These guys seem to be processing something. They may well be trying to make a, a sort of alcohol. But this is what you expect to find in the squatter settlements. Activities whereby people are just trying to carry out small-scale industries so they're going to earn some money for themselves without major startup costs or anything like that. As we head out on the other side of Nairobi, we find this area, some characteristics of a squatter settlement, like a mud road, how and these walls of these buildings are unfinished, but then this is definitely a professionally built four story building. And they've got electricity here, which you don't expect to find in squatter settlements, and yet people are trading on the street here. What we're probably looking at here is a very old squatter settlement that's been upgraded over time. 
Here we're in uh, Mathara, as it says up here, and this is a youth sports association. Mathara is quite an old squatter settlement, and we can see here that they have a, a sense of community spirit, um, people in the community working together with others in the community to provide some of the services they might not otherwise get. We've got their football team here, Mathara United. Again, you can see the barbed wire, which suggests there's a security issue. You can also see these fairly formally built walls, formally built structures back there, suggesting that Mathara is an old squatter settlement that's been developed over time to become formalized, or at least somewhat more formal. And now we're on the outskirts of the city on the other side. This is where the newest residents may well end up settling. Where the newest res residents may well end up settling, most recently built buildings, and we can see in the distance some of the ones that have been there a bit longer and have been formalized.